Hey everybody, welcome to another segment of Tony's show and today we're going to be all over the place. Um, I want to first uh, talk about Yanni uh, or Aramac as most of you know. He actually put out a PDF or a PowerPoint presentation called um, uh, The Attack to Mankind and, co and Our Countermeasures. Okay, he put out a good an excellent thing so when you look on my uh, platform today when I talk you'll see his blog site is supposed to be somewhere on there and a lot of people already uh, have it and they're already going to start distributing distributing it as well so look for it uh, he did a really good job in, in um, uh, creating a concise I guess platform for everybody to just get on who's been a targeted individual, who's been assaulted by nano poisoning, who's been dealing with nanobiotech, uh, you know, and the assault of it, frequencies, the whole nine yards. So he did a superb job, really, really good job. So I think, you know, when you get a chance, go check it out. Um, he is, um, let's see if I got him here. Um, Yanni's site on the Salt of Mankind. He's blog.yannis.com. So go check him out. Check out what he put out. Uh, I think for those of you, and I, and we, it's nothing that you haven't heard. But what he did is he put it in, in such a, a way that every, it's and now it's packaged so that everybody can see it, have it, and you can pass it on. Anybody you know has been assaulted, afflicted, or have a have a copy for yourself to give you an idea what to do. And how to do it. So kudos to uh, Giannis there. He did a really super job on it. So check out his site. Check out everything that he's got going on. Uh, there's going to be a lot of different topics uh, tonight. We're going to be across the whole spectrum of where we're at and how things are devolving and where we're going in regard to some of the, the developments that are happening. Um, and... <clears throat> With all the wonderful um, things going on today, it's just becoming more and more fun by the day. We are going to talk in regard to some of the, um, well, I don't know, let's, let's start off with the brain, shall we? Our brain, our brain has now been communicated with over 20 billion nanoparticles talking to our brain through electricity. Now, I've been saying this for quite some time with cell phone and iPads and technology and smart stuff. But what about the nano already in your head, already talking to your cells, already acting like part of your cellular matrix? What about that? How is that impacting you? What's going on there? How does that, you know, changing the way you perceive reality how is that sliding you into the AI realm or the AI world or the AI stage you know we have been taught <clears throat> excuse me we have been taught so much bullshit over the course of time and we have based our premise on what we've been taught as fact and now we're learning that a lot of facts that we were which we are assuming are no longer facts in fact a lot of it is just fairy tale and now we're, we're reevaluating everything from whether the planet is actually round or flat or a platter or a pizza something that's circular and flat, you know, reevaluating re that, reevaluating some of the reasons why now that based on some of the things, one, per one thing I read was the sun is shining on the earth and since the sunlight is reaching throughout the whole universe, then the earth should be able to cast a shadow if it was round. So there's a lot of things like that that make you go, hmm, <laughs> you know what I mean? And we know our governments have lied to us. They, they preach some nonsense. They keep on pacifying everybody with promises of 
who knows what, telling us that things are getting better when they really aren't. And it doesn't matter what stripe you wear, conservative, liberal, democratic, uh, Republican, you know, in between, external, internal, whatever it is that you, you know, whatever your stripe is that you think uh, you're following. Nothing's changed. Nothing, exchange, nothing has changed except the cycle that we are in keeps on being repetitive, keeps on bringing us down lower and lower, keeps on bringing us, bringing us back to the same, same um, disastrous brink of destruction, disastrous brink of extermination. You know, before nuclear bombs were around, we had bullets and bombs. Now, after nuclear bombs and hydrogen bombs and mega bombs and ultra, ultra, ultra mega bombs and megaton bombs, we now have directed energy weapons that were first used, well, well I shouldn't say first used, but have been used in Canada at Fort McMurray in Paradise, in California. I believe they were used down in Texas that created the hurricanes down there in Puerto Rico. Uh, I believe also that they probably were used against uh, Japan to, to uh, produce this first tsunami that we hit. It hit Indonesia with some of the quaking that was going on then at the time. I think over a period of time it has become more and more refined and now Australia is being hit and who knows, it may go to New Zealand, may go to India, may go to the Philippines. We don't know where it's going to go next. But it's, it's becoming obvious that these fires that are occurring are not happening as a act of God. But the insurance companies will now renege on paying the Australians the money for their homes that were damaged by these directed energy weapons so they can now have the land for cheap, rebuild everything for cheap, institute into the constructs of the re, 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 uh, reconstruction, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, surveillance software that they want to put in uh, Australia. We have to remember that in these countries are, are pro-democracy and pro-choice. You know, uh, having an invasion of your privacy is just against everything that we hold in regard to our freedoms and freedoms of choices. And so that has to be eliminated by destroying, first destroying the current uh, existing theme, the, 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 stat, the stat, status of security. You've got your home, it's paid for, it's been handed down to you from your grandparents, your parents, and so forth. Now you wipe that all out, and now there's no recompensation, recompensation, or, re or compensation for those homes because it was an act of God. Hmm. <laughs> God fired a laser beam on my home. He destroyed it. Wow. <laughs> Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a directed energy weapon coming down from the sky. Oh, must be God. This is the stupidity that's going on today. So when we're looking at some of the current themes today going on and how your brain has been invaded by nanoparticulates and has been now assembling a circuitry in your brain allowing for better transmissions and, and they want to sell you a carbon material or a shungite material which is a carbon C60, which then embeds itself into the cellular matrix, integrating with the cells in the DNA, making you more of a receptor and or, or trans, a transceiver, where you transmit and receive, making more, more, I guess, effective and being able to be able to read your thoughts or AI can interpret your thoughts, initiate an integration of ideas or concepts that you may not have thought of and or direct you and make direct you in thought 
or direct you in the process where, again, we're call, talking this programming. Do we need a tether that Elon Musk is talking about? No. The tether basically cinches you into the AI network so you no longer are who you are. Again, I have no idea why he would even want to do this himself, but hey, to each drone. If he wants to do this, he can do it to himself. Now, we're talking about robots and AI and nano and how they're all integrated. Well, there's restaurants in San Francisco that had decided to put robots in the restaurants. So everything, you know, whether it was a pizza, fast food, whatever. Robots were doing it all. Preparing it, cooking it, baking it, making it, whatever. But these restaurants are losing money. Losing money. Now they were blaming it on whatever they were blaming it on. And I laughed when I read what I read. Because I knew better. Being in business and, and knowing how business works. When you are in the San Francisco area, you're probably going to be paying at least 50, 50 to 100 bucks for a plate of food. Now think about this. you got a robot. You go in there. And they're pushing this theme on... No meat. No, you want to eat soy or quinoa or, you know, rice or some shit, whatever they want you to eat. So you go into a restaurant and you and you park your ass sitting in front of a restaurant and now the dishes that they're offering you are quinoa, <laughs> grains, tofu, beans, legumes, whatever. And they want $50 for a bowl of quinoa. 50 bucks. Imagine that. Or $100 for a bowl of quinoa. It ain't going to take long before a restaurant goes out of business. I go into a restaurant, I want a hamburger. I want some kind of poultry. I want some kind of beef or some kind of animal protein. If I'm going to pay that kind of money, I want to make sure that what i am got is real food. I don't want to eat grass. I don't want to eat grains. I don't want to eat beans. I don't want to eat legumes I or nuts and seeds. I want meat. I want poultry. I want what's real. And then they came out with this shit this week about some pea and seaweed that they made look like steak. I mean, are you kidding me? What meat eater is going to say, oh yeah, this is really going to taste just like meat. Really? <laughs> they are trying very hard to break down everybody and make everybody weaker because the more carbon you consume the easier it is for the assimilation process of nanotechnology or nanobiotech especially the carbon based materials the silica based materials and other materials that can actually reinforce carbon can now assimilate and take and incorporate them in this tech inside of you when your diet is primarily a real protein, real protein, and what I mean by real protein, I mean a protein that has a high biological value. For instance, milk has a biological value of between 90 and 91. Now what is a biological value? Biological value is the rating that they give proteins in, in, based on 100. Your ability to absorb a protein. Milk is between 90 and 91 percent. That's pretty good. Whey is about 92 percent. That's really good. Eggs are 93 percent. That's really good. Now if you add gelatin or collagen to an egg or whey, you buff up the absorption rate up to 99. Wow. 99 out of 100 is the absorption rate of these proteins. These, this is real food. Real, even meat has a biological value of between 88 and 90. Meat. That's what, let's look at tofu, miso, and all that other nonsense. BB rating is at best, at best, around 40 to 42. Usually it's between around 35 to 37, but it can be up higher if they you know, they do something to it. And the PDCAA for soy is such a joke. My pea has as much PDCAA as soy, and I don't eat soy. That's how ridiculous and retarded it is. Because they know that the soy is such a shitty protein and a shitty food that they had to come up with a rating to give it some kind of 
theme that sounded like it had some value. And then when you look at the, you know, the PDCAA on, on soy, and you look at it and see what it actually means, it's a joke. Same thing with peanuts, nuts, seeds, legumes. They're all about, they all rate one on the PDCAA, which is nothing. Everything can rate not one on a PDCA, even anything. Milk, eggs, dairy, they're all rated as one. So basically they're trying to tell us that the soy, the beans, the peanuts, the nuts, the seeds, the sunflower, so forth, have the same biological value as eggs and dairy. They don't. So imagine going into a restaurant in, in San Francisco and some robot decide, you know, you go in there and some robot takes your order Makes your order, brings you out your little tofu or your or your your um, plate full of beans, and you get a bill at the end of it saying seventy-five to one hundred dollars for a bowl of beans. Wow! <laughs> you think that business? You think that business is going to last? <laughs> Yeah, I want to come into your restaurant just to see a robot cook my food for me. How much is a bowl of beans? What? One hundred dollars. Wow. Some really expensive beans. Are. How about a bowl of peanuts? Oh, that's a hundred dollars. Ooh. <laughs> when you're in these big cities, especially on the West Coast, San Francisco, L.A., Hollywood, whatever, uh, Vancouver, you know, uh, any, of the, any of the big major hubs out in the West Coast, Eugene, whatever. You're going to pay through the nose. It's just the way it works. It's just how it works, you know. You go have a chicken dinner out in those places and you go have a place in a local state or province where it's not as pronounced or as, as um, metro, metropolitan as those, those areas, you're not going to pay the same price. There's no way. Everything is based on whatever, wherever the cost of living where you are. When I was up in Toronto, we were doing a green show uh, years ago. The restaurants all around there to go have a steak dinner was like 75 bucks right off the bat. And then I found another place there where, I, you know, where I was able to go and, uh, and you buy a whole chicken for like 10 bucks at a place that has like had a rotisserie. So you know, it, all the, and then I figured, well, chicken's okay with me. I'm not, uh, not you know, offended at eating a chicken. But I mean, that's just the way it is. And so if you're in a place and you have these novelty toys and you have to charge an, you know, a fortune because you got high tech that's costing you big money and you got a, a uh, geographical area where it's very uh, not ec non-economical, very expensive. But the robot may cut down your costs as far as your labor goes. But you still have to pay for that machine. You still have to pay for the rent. You still have to pay for the locale. And so as a result, robot restaurants are out of business in San Francisco. <laughs> now, another thing that's going on, which I find a little funny, is now they're talking about the male, t male, uh, male testosterone levels in the United States are dropping drastically. I wonder why. You ever go to a grocery store in America? I go visit my mom, and there's a... Um, store there we go to it's sort of like a, a chain store with the groceries in it and you go in there and I always read everything honestly I read every label the only thing I ever buy from this place is maple syrup uh, dehydrated mashed potato and butter cultured milk that's it then yogurt they have has no fat in it. I don't bother. Reason why I buy the butter cultured milk because it has fat in it. Um, there's lunch meats all have artificial natural flavor and soy. Like I mean, are you kidding me? Why is soy? I mean, seriously, think about this. Why is soy mixed with lunch meat? Oh, we're going to add more protein to the soy. Yeah, we're adding more estrogen to the soy. Is what's going on there? So now the guys go to work, you know, he's going to have lunch because he's, he's working a hard job or he's working a physical job, a manual laboring job, whatever. So now he has lunch meat, which has got soy in it. Ooh. Now he goes and buys 
a gallon of milk. Or she buys a gallon of milk, either way. And he's drinking this milk, which also has the cows being fed soy, which is very highly estrogenic, which now carries over. Plus, the soy has glyphosates in it and atrazine. Wow. Now, guy goes and has cheese. Cheese is coming from the same dairy product that came from that same cow. Now, you're going to go out and eat meat, which again is being fed, you know. So then, you look at the soaps you're wearing. They're all xenoestrogenic. The colognes and the deodorants you're wearing are also xenoestrogenic. And then you wonder why with all this exposure to xenoestrogens and estrogens that the testosterone levels in America are down. And this is not just America. This is not just America. Canada has the same problem. You know, so does Europe. So does Asia. You know, we're dealing with stupidity on a level that we've never seen before. And this is being done on purpose, obviously, because if the testosterone levels in men drop, they'll have heart failure. Wipe out the male population. Wipe out the male population. Kind of hard to reproduce male, uh, reproduce babies if you don't have the seed to do it with. And if the seed is contorted, which it is, with estrogens and nanoparticulates, I don't know what you're making. I don't know what you're creating. You know, you're, you're interacting with each other and exchanging DNA. The DNA, DNA now has high levels of estrogen because both the women and the men are producing these estrogens in the seed. The seed now is carrying nanotechnology, nanobiotech. Wow, we don't know what the heck we're making today. What's coming? And they're looking at this two and three generations down. What happens in two generations from now, three generations, if we're still here? Can these children or these, this life that's being produced, is it going to be now violated and integrated into whatever technocracy is around? Imagine from day one, from day one, Every cell in the body has some kind of nanobiotech, nanoconstructs in the system. Imagine that. Imagine that the moment you hold the cell phone, the cell phone now interacts with the DNA, activating the, this circuitry inside the body, programming the person to be able to use the technology. Imagine that. I got a three-year-old nephew who can do that already grabs a cell phone, whatever, iPad, and he knows exactly what to do, what to access, and how to access them. And it's not because these children are more prone and more, and they're easily to, able to pick this up. It's because the machinery that they're holding has now interfaced with their, with their biometrics, and it's telling them what to do because they're able to interface with the technology that's already there. 20 billion nanoparticles talk to the brain through electricity. Remember that article we just talked about a little while ago? Well, now you have the ends and means to do this just in this simple little thing. What happens two and three generations down the way? What is going to happen? <laughs> because there is no, no regulations on nanomaterials. Zero. They have been pumping this stuff in the air. They have been pumping it in the food supply. They've been pumping it in the water table. They've been pumping it in the crops. They've been pumping it in your clothing. They've been pumping it in the constructs of, of materials in, the, in electronics. Which then brings us to an another thing. The toxicology aspects of nanomaterials used in energy harvesting consumable products. And when you look at that research, everything that it is saying is what we've been saying forever in regarding to the, the, um, the integration right into the genome and the genetic code and the DNA and the chromosomes and the cells and the mitochondria you know, and right into the brain. It's going to make it easy to subjugate mankind under a technocratic rule 
with all this technology that has interfaced and integrated with men and women. It's like what Daniel said, clay and iron interfacing. You know, when he saw it, when Daniel was seeing the vision. This is what's going on. This is what's happening. We don't have a more gallons. We have a biotech, synthetic biology that's interacting with our biology, that's overriding our DNA, making us more susceptible to the programming of the day and, uh, and what's coming. When you look at people today, they have become solely, solely, solely um, isolated and have isolated themselves, and some for good reasons. Some for good reasons. But a lot of times when you get out in some places, people gather as if they're, they're been activated to observe you in the area. All of a sudden, there's this gestalt forming around you or about you. People all of a sudden observing you. It's as if no matter where you're, go you're going, you're being monitored. It is what it is. You know, and this is where this is the life that we have today. So when we're looking at some of the things going on, you know, um, pay attention. I keep saying this, pay attention. Pay attention. You know, we're not in that in that realm where things are things are not what they appear to be. Now look at this. Pamper notifies cell phones when diapers full. Can you imagine putting a diaper on a child on its genitals and its backside that's emitting a transmission from that diaper to the cell phone? Can you imagine the genetic damage that this is causing to the reproductive system since the body is not capable or doesn't have the barrier or the, or the, the cellular density to protect the area, that region? what is being done now to change the chromosomes from these transmissions. Can you imagine this? Pampers did this? Beyond belief stupid. But is it so stupid or is that the plan? Is it basically the plan to create a sterilization program with something as harmless as a pamper that can um, pass frequencies through a diaper, through the, through the anatomy of a child, to reach your cell phone. I mean, really, are we becoming that dependent on a cell phone that we need to have a cell phone tell us that the child's diaper is full of shit and we need to go change it? Are you kidding me? Or the diaper's full of piss and the child needs to be changed or there might be a rash? If you, if you have become this stupid to have to rely on a diaper to send a signal to your cell phone to change it, then perhaps maybe you shouldn't have children. Since you're too busy to pay attention to something that fundamental, perhaps not having children might be better. Go have a dog, go have a cat, you know, put a diaper on its ass. What the hell? Then you can, then you can know that your dog or cat has taken a dump in the diaper. I mean, it's it's just it's uncanny today to, to think to think that this is going to be put around an area <laughs> where it could be susceptible to being modified, altered, and damaged. I mean, are you kidding me? This is where technocracy is taking over in ways it shouldn't. You know. And common sense does not prevail. Okay, we're going to talk about xenobots. Xenobots are basically an artificial life. Now they created, they taken a uh, frog, the African clawed frog called Xenopus uh, lavis, and they used it to gen uh, to generate. Oh, sorry, they, they used it to incorporate that into a bot. Now they're saying that. Xenobots take their name and stem cells from the African claw Xenopus lavius. They can regenerate and are entirely biodegradable when they die. Killing them is not easy though. Unlike traditional materials, the robots can be sliced almost in half and will fix themselves back to their normal form. Well, what do you know? 
This is the nanobiology that is self-repair, self-assembling, self-replicating. We've been saying that for a long, long, long time. We've been telling you that no direct assault on these nano nanotechnology uh, would prevail against them because they would be able to repair themselves, replicate, and um, assemble and continue on in the program. So when we're looking at this now, artificial life, and they're talking about using this to swim inside of you and to do this and to do that and using it in all, all uh, facets of the environment. Can you imagine that, putting this into an environment? And the DNA of this, let's say, gets hooked up with other frogs. What happens then? Does the program from the bot now incorporate itself into the, into the frogs? And does that now change the genome of the frog? Wow. We know that nanoparticles can affect the genetic, um, uh, genetic construct of any DNA whether it be animal or or men or women, we know that it can alter the environment just by incorporating it into the environment. Okay, so what happens now when it's already mixed with DNA, integrated, interfaced, and then released into the environment? What happens if they throw it into a lake or, or, or a stream and they're trying to clean the environment and all of a sudden the fish decides to eat this material what happens does it now as the fish eats it and consumes it and it goes through the digestive system and the acids hit it and now the acids are activating the the, um, the xenobot to now integrate or interface with the DNA of that fish altering that fish with the components that it just consumed what happens to that fish? What becomes of it? Is it now changed in even its behavioral patterns? Is it now more aggressive? Is it now more passive? Does it die? What do we know? What happens when a plant consumes this or it gets broken down in an in, in area where you have plant life? Well, so much for the vegans, eh? <laughs> you just ate a frog. It just integrated with your corn and your beans and your tofu and miso and all the other soy products that you think is good for you. <laughs> I've often said, vegans are not the brightest people on the planet, but something like this could very well easily get into the food supply and could alter their DNA beyond repair and now you have a, well, I don't know what you'd call it, a program, a new program running. <coughs> Who knows, maybe the people might grow scales or might grow a, a skin like a frog. All of a sudden, maybe it might have this urge to, you know, stick out its tongue and catch a fly and eat it. You never know. <laughs> I thought you were a vegan. Yeah, but I have this un. un I have this unusual urge to eat flies. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I shouldn't really be laughing because the seriousness of that implication just goes to show you what could happen in a, in a situation like this. And again, nothing's tested. Nothing is, is, is uh, looked into. They're making these things and releasing them into the environment just like that. And whatever little testing is done is to see how durable the material is and how and what it can you know what it can handle and then out it goes you know when you're when I people tell me I want to grow a garden I keep telling them grow a garden but grow it indoors they, they you know breaking traditional habits is extremely difficult and I get that but you have to start thinking what year we're in 2020, not 1920, not 1820, 2020. And in the year 2020, we have frequencies blurring all over the, the uh, atmosphere, altering genetic and DNA coding. We have nanoparticles falling down from the sky, which is now embedding itself into the soil. 
which now is affecting the genome structures of the plants that are around, even the trees, the grasses, and any other vegetation that this comes in contact with. So what are you eating when, when you grow something in the garden? It's not about flavor, it's not about taste, it's not about, you know, if you enjoy it or not. Now you have to start thinking in terms of what is this going to do to your DNA? Now some of you say, well, you know what, I'm gonna eat whatever I want, it don't matter, looks like they're gonna kill us anyway, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is the ignorance of this. A, you don't know what this is gonna do. B, you don't know how, when it's gonna kill you. And in the interim, you don't know how much you're gonna suffer before you die. Now there are themes and, and um, ideologies and belief systems out there that believe very strongly that you suffer uh, intensely so that you can release a certain frequency that certain entities can feed on. There might be some truth to that. Might actually have some relevance to this. So imagine now, now I'm, again, I'm going to get you to think, I'm going to play an advocate here of some kind. Imagine you've eaten something that has now, after a period of time, after, after some accumulation and some activation with the, with the frequencies, you are now starting to feel some major, major, major pain. Pain that can make you cry, pain that can make you scream. Pain that is sending signals, signaling pathways throughout your whole body at an alarming, strong signaling rate, causing major, major, major pain in your body. And you are now suffering in intensely. And an entity feeds off of that energy. You have just become the battery for that entity. Because you assumed you're going to die anyway and most people when they think that they're going to die anyway believe it's going to be like Hollywood's version of death you're just going to close your eyes and go quietly into the sunset that may not be the case with this technology this biotech that's infecting inflicting um, you know and activating inside of everybody something to think about see we think in terms of what hollywood has programmed us okay hollywood has taught us that oh we're gonna die and it's gonna be we're just gonna close our eyes and go into the sunset you know ple blissfully peaceful and we're going to oh it's gonna be just an easy thing nobody knows for sure how you're going to die and nobody knows for sure how quick or slow this is going to happen. And might want to consider that perhaps, maybe, you know, <clears throat> if you've got different, um, different family members that you brought into this planet, perhaps you just, you may want to um, stick around and take care of them. Might not be a bad idea. Someone else sent me today a report about tech companies doing the most harm. I think everybody should read this alone. We are dealing with tech companies that don't give a shit about your rights whatsoever. In fact, they are helping the police forces in North America and throughout the world to circumvent your rights of privacy uh, whether you have a, a uh, charter of rights, whether you have the, the um, um, well, what the hell does Americans have now? The Declaration of Independence and the, the um, oh, the rights, I forget the, the document now, I just slipped my head. But anyway, anything you might have, you know, that the, um, that protect your civil rights and liberties, they're now showing the law enforcement agencies how to circumvent your rights that are protected by these documents so they can now invade your privacy. They can monitor everything you're doing. 
Jay, talk to some videos on about this, you know, technology we have today, AI technology. And I refer to the cameras as being that we think that the camera is only seeing us. When that camera can see a football stadium of people and pinpoint and pick out anybody it wants with specific whatever configuration you tell it to look for. China's got the surveillance going all over its countryside. It can zero in on anybody's face. Facial recognition is everywhere. You know, and so as a result, you can't get around anywhere without some tech picking up where you're walking, facial recognition, head recognition, body recognition. Break a law, it now knows who you are, you know, reports you, puts you on the list. It can now take away your right and access to your funds and your uh, economics because you now are tied into a techno system, a technocratic system. So when, you're to, when we're looking at these technologies, Amazon, Facebook, Google, MySpace, all these other social mediums out there, and there's some other ones there that when you look at them, they're going to make you raise an eyebrow on, you know, what they're doing. Now imagine the same tech, same people, the same technology, same access to the technology that can now activate the frequencies or the technology that's residing in your body to turn it on and to assemble it. Now imagine this as well. Imagine this. A 3D printer which can construct different things is now sending a frequency inside your body through a 3D printing frequency and now is building something inside of you many many miles away. Imagine that using your body to perhaps develop a virus. Maybe using your body to develop a material. Maybe using your body to spread a pathogen. Maybe using your body to come up with a uh, an antidote. Using you as a as a material building construct. Imagine that. Imagine that might be possible. You know when we watch Star Trek and we say, Scotty, beam me up. And they go to the replicator ride and want steak and eggs and the coffee. And then, you know, produces the, using the molecular technology it has, it produces a 3D or 4D printout of a cup of coffee mm -hmm. with coffee in it. <clears throat> with the added nutrients and vitamins inside. Replicated food that you like eating. All synthetic. All synthetic. All nano loaded. <laughs> Imagine that. It might be the future. Probably is going to be. <clears throat> Almost everything else they did with the Star Trek they made a reality. Imagine that now. And you take that same concept of the same technology and apply it to you. Apply it to you. Imagine when you die, instead of being put into the ground and you rot and, and renew the earth with your, with your bacteria and with your, and your breakdown, all of a sudden they take your body and decide that they're going to use the building blocks and the materials that have accumulated in your body and because your body has been creating the chemistry inside of it with all these particulates that are going on, is now harvesting your body for those materials. Imagine that. Some of you might think that's far-fetched. I would challenge you to prove me wrong. Go figure. It's not as far-fetched as it sounds. We are in the year 2020. Okay, when we're looking at all the things I just talked about tonight, living robots made from frog stem cells, xenobots, Toxicology aspects of nanomaterials used in energy harvesting, and they're showing you, showing you clearly how this nanotechnology, this nanobiotech, is now has the capacity and the capability of mutating your DNA, mutating your mitochondria, mutating your body's capacity to produce ATP, mutating your chromosomes, mutating the DNA, 
mutating the very cells itself that it integrates with. This is not the future coming. This is the future past that's already been, come, and gone. And now the evolution of these things that are going on today is at a hyper accelerated rate because now we have artificial intelligence incorporated into the matrix that is, in, that is rapidly developing these technologies to make them more effective, more efficient, or even uh, more evolved. You know, we're seeing this with a lot of things coming on today. We're seeing this with a lot of different venues going on today. Even the medications you're taking today are altering your minds, or altering your moods, or altering your biochemistry. Look at just the statins alone, what they do to you. Because it disrupts your body's capacity to use lipids in the system, the first place this causes damage is in the brain. Now they're using this in order to regulate cholesterol in the body, and they're using this in order to regulate the fats uh, in the system as well. But when it breaks down the fats that the brains require in order for it, the brains to work properly, and it regulates the fats around the heart so that the heart can work properly, you start to break down. Your genetic code now is changing, your mood changes, your thoughts change, everything starts to become altered. That's what a statin. What happens when we give a child a vaccination that now has uh, human protein or, or uh, protein from people. What happens there? What genetic changes can occur in a child because you added that protein sequence? What damage does it do to the immune system? <laughs> you know I mean, again, these are things that I'm trying to get you to um, understand how the nature of what we're in today, the environment that we're in today is the most precarious and tenuous environment we've ever lived in. It's not because people are walking around with a gun. The gun that's being used today is DNA. The gun that's being used today are frequencies. The gun that's being used today are mind-altering medications. Medications, not drugs, not the street drugs. Street drugs are doing this, but it's the, it's the medications that you are going to a doctor or pharmacist to get. These are the things that, these are the institutions that you have trusted that are going to take care of you, and yet here they are giving you alter, uh, medications that are altering your genome, your genetic code, your DNA, your chromosomes, your ATP, your mitochondria, and a lot of these medications now have nano delivery into them. Wait till they start creating medications with DNA in it. Whoa, ho, ho. In fact, they've already started. Imagine that you are now delivering a drug into a host, into a person, using an XNA delivery method. XNA, what is that? Xenic nucleic acid, what does it do? It can now copy your DNA. Imagine that we put something like that into a person's body that can now copy the DNA so there's no rejection. Now that DNA that you're, you put in the body that has copied your DNA and your strands of DNA is now entering a program into your DNA matrix so now it can now alter the DNA. And when you read all these articles about how they're looking to help us recover and heal and it's going to make drug delivery better. I do not want to take drugs. And I sure as hell don't want it to be being delivered into my system more readily and more rapidly. And I do not want something that effective to get a drug into my system to, take, to make me an addict. A permanent addict. Because I've taken something out that may have shut down a genetic code that allowed my body to ma ma manufacture what I needed, now it no longer has that capacity because we turned the switch off. Some of you are sick because you've been on medications for a long time. 
And when you get on these medications for quite some time, what winds up happening, your normal bodily functions do not function any longer because you have deactivated the, the, um, the signaling pathway to activate those organs when they're needed to uh, produce. For instance, I'll give an example, a simple example, two actually. When we're giving somebody Synthroid for their thyroid, and if their thyroid is functioning, but they, but they are not converting the T3 to T4, T4 to T3 rather, and you now have this going on in the system, the thyroid now will stop producing the T4, T3 because it's now in the system. There's no feedback loop to the thyroid to activate it so that it can make its own. Same thing when guys are taking testosterone. A lot of guys are taking these testosterone shots to go and work out their weights. So they got big muscles now and they got big thunder thighs and thunder calves and biceps on their biceps and they're strong and they can lift 5,000 million pounds with one finger and they look like Dynamo Joe. But now the testicles or their balls start to shrink, start to atrophy, start to now quit producing the testosterone because the luteinizing hormone pathway is no longer needed or activated because as long as the body has the testosterone in it, there is no feedback loop to tell it to produce more when it gets low. Now, male testicles or male balls are being shredded to pieces with titanium, with nano silver, with cadmium. They are coming down from the sky in the food you're eating and other things that you're exposed to with these components because anything on a nano scale, nano titanium, nano cadmium, nano silver, beeline right to the balls or to the testicles and shred them to pieces on the inside. Women need to be careful of aluminum and bismuth. Apparently bismuth goes directly to the ovaries. B lines are right to the ovaries and causes damage. The experiment goes on. And the ignorance also goes on. You gotta quit following the goofy gurus. If they are no law if they are not even dealing with these things that I'm talking about today, you are never going to recover from whatever health issue you have. You may put it in remission because you've lowered the biofilm inside the body but as long as this program is being activated a lot of the methods of the old methods will no longer work like they used to helping people deal with cancers in the past was so much easier and we used to see so much success now with these this this um, these materials assembling in the system causing mutations to occur and shutting down uh, the, the body's immune system's capacity to repair and defend itself is making healing far more difficult. So using just a simple herb or herbal remedy today may not be enough. Some things it may still work, some things it, it may be just a matter of removing the biofilm or some of the buildup or the debris that may have accumulated as a result of the damage that these things have done. But in the long and short of it, if you don't deal with the nano, the nano program, the nano biotechnology, the nano fullerenes, the single uh, carbon nanotubes, the multi web, multi um, uh, carbon nanotubes, the dendromeres, the quantum dots, and all the rest that goes along with it. And we start looking at things from a nano scale as far as even chemistry is concerned. If we're not looking at that, and you're, for instance, you're consuming that by eating all the grains and all the vegetables because of the carbon content, it loves carbon. It is, most of it is a carbon. And so it is going to, again, gravitate to carbon. Now, if it has the components where carbon, where the brain requires glucose, which is a type of carbon, sugar, and when the carbon C60 gets into the brain and accesses this, it now has an affinity with that carbon, binds to the brain, and now you have an antenna lodged into your brain. And now you are, I hear and obey, I hear and obey. You know, I always refer to the Bible 
And I look at Nimrod when he's building the Tower of Babel. And how the people, again, were of one mind and one language, which are one voice and one mind. And that's in referring to a program. They were all under the same program. They didn't even have to speak and communicate in order to put, to do the jobs they needed to do because they were linked by that program. This, my humblest estimation, appears to be the same thing happening again. A linking of mankind to build a portal of some kind. I think this time though, I think this time, if it gets to the point of building a portal, that door may open. And we might see Jesus coming on the other side, quite possible. And then this earth is going to shake. And those entities that are on this planet, that are causing all this bullshit, are also going to shake. Because then they're going to see real power. King of kings, Lord of lords. No game there. That's how it rolls. So this time it may be a little different. Who knows? We'll see when the time comes. Again, speculation, not fact. Just some thoughts to get you to think. Just some ideas to get you to see things. Maybe in a different light. <clears throat> but you can see just from these reports today, just the things that we I talked about, how dubious things really are. Some of you are saying, well, I got to make a living. I got to do this. I got to do that. And I get that. I do. But you got to start taking steps in regarding to what you're eating, what you're exposing yourself to. And basically, it's going to get down to some basic fundamental things. Nothing extravagant. Nothing lavish. In order so that you do not wind up accelerating the access and domination of your genetic code. As you keep on again removing these materials from your body allowing your system to recalibrate itself and to develop a possible a possible defense against this given time I believe it can happen. I don't think we'll ever 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 be completely free of nanobiotech. As long as they keep spraying the sky, as long as they keep hitting us with frequencies from these towers, phones, smart devices, etc. As long as they keep polluting the atmosphere with chemtrails and uh, putting up satellites across the sky, we're going to be dealing with this on some level. I don't see any way around it unless you're hiding, living in a cave, living in some kind of bomb shelter where you have your, your, your completely self-sufficient and not needing to even use the oxygen from the atmosphere, having some kind of filtration system that would not only collect the nano, but fry it. Uh, something similar to the factories uh, across in Detroit, where they put scrubbers in the smokestacks, so as the nano particles were coming out as through the exhaust, they were being hit with over 220,000 volts, a static discharge to, again, destroy these particulates <clears throat> and reduce the emissions. Didn't stop it, it reduced it. So, unless you've got something of that nature set up to block, burn, destroy the air coming in through a filtration system, again, you may be breeding it. So, like I said, this is where there's a call for wisdom here for those people who are seeing what's going on to start studying and accessing things we need to think about if we plan on being here. We're planning on living, planning on evolving but evolving in the manner that we were meant to evolve in, not the manner our artificial intelligence wants us to evolve in. Learning these things and learning these technologies and being able to, again, apply these things and then working with other people that share the same kind of thinking and concepts, you know, save a remnant, if you will. This is where we got to be. This is where it has to be. Can't go into survival. We have to go through transitional thrival. We're used to using electricity from a power grid. We may have to design our own power grid or our own, or our own power generators in order to produce our own power. This is a concept that we need to think about. Again, these are thoughts I'm throwing out there because, like I said, it's something 
for you to think about. All righty, I want to uh, end this real quick. I should say quick. I just want to end it by saying again, there are people out there really making a difference or trying to make a difference. You got Brian396. He's got his data on nanobiotech at www.minds.com. You got Brian396's photo gallery. It's on photosgoogle.com. Uh, go check it out. It's showing you all kinds of imagery of the nano poisoning. You got uh, Giannis' site on the salt of mankind. Uh, HTTPS uh, forward slash forward slash blog dot Giannis.com. The link will be there. Aramax uh, YouTube channel. Go check them out. Uh, you got me at the uh, augmentenforce.com. You got me at www.bitshoot.com channel forward slash independence. You got the uh, YouTube channel. Um, uh, and then you also you got the Podbean that I, that I have as well, independence.podbean. So people like this are doing stuff. Support them any way you can. Help them any way you can. You know, give them what you can. And if you can't give, no big deal. Share the data. Share the data. Direct people to the sites. That will go a long way and, you know, the neighbor you save might become an ally up the way. You never know. All right. Check these places out. Check out the links. Share the links. Uh, again, share that one, especially that uh, uh, Yanni put out there, uh, Salt on Mankind. You know, it's, uh, it's a good one. He's got you know, Howard Being Assaulted and solutions in order to deal with it. All right. Uh, till the next, next pro po uh, podcast to your health. See you in a bit. Take care.